welcome to Keys News. I'm Claudia Sava. And I'm Rachel Allison. Coming up on today's show. Cellford is becoming the first location to trial 5G. Eurovision protests take place in Media City. And we take a look at how our furry friends are celebrating Valentine's Day. First today, Media City is becoming the first location to host the full trial of the updated mobile internet service 5G. It will give businesses large and small alike the chance to test their services with the new and improved network. Vodafone UK, the pioneering company behind the network, hope to begin rolling out 5G to select areas by mid-2019. George Sinister reports. Salford is already one of the world's leading sites for television and radio output. Now, Media City is at the forefront of mobile internet technology, as it is the first place in the UK to be testing the next generation of mobile internet, known as 5G. 5G is something that will be noticed by all of us, allowing us to stream, download and upload much quicker. Right now, we're just in the process of bringing in Vodafone as a partner, which is really exciting because we're going to have the first 5G testbed in the UK. So any businesses, companies, large and small, that want to test products in a 5G environment, uh, the landing is going to be the only place that they're able to, to do that. One of the main benefits of 5G is the increase in download speed. If you were to download a full HD film on 3G, this would take around about a day. If you were to do this on 4G, this would take around seven minutes. 5G offers to give us this in around four to 40 seconds. This is due to the increase in download speed being from around 50 megabits per second to around 1,000 megabits per second to 10,000 megabits per second. If we look forward to something like um, autonomous vehicles, which will come at, uh, at some point, all those vehicles don't just need to be able to navigate, but they need to talk to each other, which, in, which involves a huge amounts of data moving around. Uh, those things can't happen without a 5G network. 5G is set to be rolled out in the UK in late 2019 or early 2020. Now for some serious health concerns. It's important to know that in 2011, the World Health Organization's International Agency for Research on Cancer classified RFR as a potential 2B carcinogen and specified that the use of mobile phones could lead to specific forms of brain tumours. Many studies have associated low-level RFR exposure with a litany of health effects, including DNA single and double strand breaks, which leads to cancer. Oxidative damage, which leads to tissue deterioration and premature aging. Also, disruption of cell metabolism. Um, and finally, generation of stress proteins, leading to myriad diseases. We please do ask for people to take care. of the British government. They might have the support of ugly Donald Trump. A pro-Israeli spokesman defended the BBC's decision to host the Eurovision contest in Israel. A Palestine-led protest against Eurovision was held outside the BBC in Media City last Friday. Raphael Bloom from Northwest Friends of Israel told us Palestinian activists are calling for the UK to boycott the competition because it's an apartheid state. And that's a lie. It's simply not true. It's the only democracy in the Middle East. Still to come. Manchester celebrates the Year of the Pig. And the University of Salford holds the first ever Dragon Ball Championship. 2019 celebrates the Year of the Pig with events taking place all across Manchester to celebrate Chinese New Year. Our reporter Jody Smith reports from Chinatown. Chinese New Year has been celebrated across the globe this past week and marks the start of the Lunar Year and Manchester didn't hold back when joining in on the fun during the Year of the Pig. Phil Schultz leads Manchester's Business Improvement District, The Bid, working to help put on events like this one. 
So each year we try and find something different to do in one of the city's main spaces. It really makes people go, wow, what's that? So we couldn't think of anything better to do than a giant piglet this year, Year of the Pig. Um, but we also commissioned Stanley Chow, who's done the artwork that you can see all across the city. And we fund thousands of lanterns that go up as well. So you get a real sense of change. Get to the end of January, as you go into January, February, and Chinese New Year comes around. We decorate the city, we have a bit of anticipation, and then we put lots of things on. Business owners such as John Wallace also look forward to the celebration. Chinese New Year, if the weather's good, you know, isn't particularly good today, it's really good for us generally. But yeah, it's, it's a really, really cool thing to do, I think. Oriental street food, put on by local businesses, was also on the menu. <laughs> Locals gathered through the streets of the city centre to watch the annual Dragon Parade, accompanied with music, dancers, and the Chinese Scout Society. <laughs> The dragon was 175 foot long and attracted around 100,000 people into Manchester. Sorry. We've just been through the dragon parade. How are you guys feeling? Excited. Cold. Cold. It's quite cold today. Yeah, it's, it's been really good. Why do you guys think it's important for Manchester to celebrate and look at this type of thing? It's important for there to be loads of different cultures in a bigger city, so like for a lot more diversity. It's nice seeing what other countries do, isn't it? Yeah, it's different. Like we only ever see it on TV or on like movies and stuff, so I have to actually see something being done in England to celebrate. I think it's really good as part of the community to be involved with what's happening and just with part of the Chinese community. So it's a really good fun day out. I think it's really important that, you know, that we can sort of share our culture with everyone else as well and sort of share our traditions and what we do. Jodie Smith, reporting for Keys News. Wow, that looked absolutely amazing, didn't That's it? Really I'm good that I missed that. Did uh, you do anything on Chinese New Year? Not really, but I wish I'd been there. I know, it I looked wish amazing. I'd been there. Yeah, yeah, they, I know they celebrate with big meals, don't they, on Chinese New mm -hmm. Year. Um, what's your favourite Chinese food? Oh my god, I think it's very hard. That's very hard. Mine's I, like spring rolls. Spring rolls, that's yeah, a good choice. I do like spring yeah. rolls and fortune cookies as well. Mm. I love getting a fortune. I like the yeah. messages as well. Take yeah. them very <laughs> seriously, don't I? <laughs> All right, the Maxwell Building at Salford University hosted the first ever Dragon Ball Super Card Game European Championship Tournament last Saturday. Over 260 participants from all over the world signed up to compete at the inaugural event. Charlie Mulholland went down to find out more. It has taken nearly a year and a half, but finally the Dragon Ball Super Card Game has started its competitive scene here in Europe. And the first European Championship qualifier was held here in Salford on Saturday afternoon. The Maxwell Building here in Salford played a host to over 260 players of the card game who had flew over from all over the world to take part and are screaming with joy just like their Saiyan counterparts from the anime. <laughs> We have around 260 people uh, on the event, um, which is a pretty insane number of people to kind of like sort out and get them onto tables and whatnot. It's an uh, open tournament. Everybody who wants to play can come and play. Uh, this is the first of its kind in Europe. We've had these events in the US before, uh, but now Dragon Ball Super is coming to Europe with their championship series. The card game plays like this. Each player builds a 50 card deck of battle cards and extra cards with one leader card based off the many characters of the Dragon Ball universe. Each player has eight cards in their life area at the start of the game, and the first player to remove all eight cards from their opponent's life area wins the game. The competitive tournament scene has already begun all over the world, from Japan to the United States to Australia, with over 50,000 people liking their Facebook social media page, and the average turnout of a major tournament attracts over 300 to 400 people. The Dragon Ball Super Card game has gained a lot of popularity over the last year, competing with the likes of Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon and Magic the Gathering in terms of sales. However, the 260 fans here seem to think that this card game will gain a lot more popularity than those games. It really has, has potential, I think. I mean, in the, in the first two years, or maybe I think I said too much, uh, one and a half year of, of existence, it's really 
uh, won a lot of people. It's a great game, so uh, it has great value and uh, ho hope in the future it will be better, even better than now. The card game itself is based off the 1984 manga Dragon Ball created by Akira Toriyama, which follows the story of Son Goku and his journey to become the strongest warrior in the universe. The manga has then adapted into an anime format in 1986 and has had several sequel shows and mangas such as Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Super and Dragon Ball GT. The most recent edition of the story, Dragon Ball Super Movie Broly, has made over $101 million at the global box office at the time of recording. I used to come home from school, bang on Cartoon Network, used to watch the hell out of it, loved it. Salford University's European Championship looks to have been a major success at bringing this fan base together to compete in their favourite game. And with Dragon Ball gaining more and more popularity with their manga, anime and video games, it looks like this trading card game tournament could be back in the Northwest very soon with bigger numbers and a higher power level. Charlie Mulholland, Keys News. Tomorrow is Valentine's Day. Rachel, have you got any plans for Valentine's Day? Um, well, actually, it is more about Girl Power Day for me tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to Bapiano's with a friend, <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. Have you got anything planned? I don't know if there are like, any activities for single people out there. No, <laughs> they, have... they should create something for Definitely. single people, because it's made. To, Valentine's Day is made for single people to feel more lonely than ever. <laughs> Um, the Mug and Dog Squad Cafe in Denton celebrated Valentine's Day with a twist. Our reporter Natasha Pires went along to the cafe to join the fun. Manchester is a busy city that finds space for all kinds of love. For many of us, they don't even need to be human. Currently, the UK is home to 51 million pets for a population of 65 million people. The Morgan Dog Squad in Denton is a cafe dedicated to owners and their pets, where only furry valentines are allowed. So we like to do events for the dogs just as if they were human ones. Um, so we've done the Valentine's event and it was very much kind of, even if you don't have a partner and you've got a furry friend, if you like, they could be your Valentine. I always say uh, she comes before the family, she comes before the kids. I mean, the kids are all grown up now, you know, but she comes first. This alternative way of celebrating Valentine's Day is one of the many events carried in the cafe, including puppy-only days. She was our first baby, so we never actually planned on having human children, but then Erica was a surprise, but no, we love Mabel. She's been my friend. <laughs> friend and soulmate. <laughs> Love for your pet might not include a romantic wedding, but it certainly lasts forever. Now, hopefully, the weather will sustain very well. Um, it is Valentine's Day, as we've already said, and That's it's the, the the student union is is hosting yeah the take the me out Lama event take yeah. me out event. So hopefully, the weather will still be good. Let's have a look. Megan Phelan has more. Apologies for that. Megan Phelan um, seems to be having some technical difficulties, but the weather does look good just for everybody to know. That is all from us this week on Keys News. Oh. Oh. Keep up to date with all the latest news and sport on Twitter and Facebook A Keys News. And for all things Salford, check out our partner website, Salford Now. We will be back at the same time next week. Goodbye. Bye.